Hello, friends. Welcome to Science Talk. I'm your host, Jim Asim. I want to discuss with you what could happen with plants as temperatures and CO2 levels continue to increase. Basically, as the planet continues to get warmer and warmer, the, the ability of plants to store carbon decreases. Not good news. So climate change could very well shut down plants, shut down the ability to operate efficiently. Because let's face it, plants draw down CO2. They make their you know, tissues, be it the lignin, the leaves, and so on. They make the glucose, right, the cellulose, etc. They're drawing down the CO2. That is in jeopardy. Right now, the process of photosynthesis worldwide absorbs about one third of all the greenhouse gas emitted that humans put into the atmosphere. The oceans absorb a, a, a big portion of the remaining two thirds. In the next two, three decades, their capacity to do so could be reduced by 50%. Why is that? Rising atmospheric temperatures will set a limit. At that limiting point, the ability of forests, grasslands, crops to capture and hold atmospheric carbon will decrease, will start to decrease. Some of these are very important uh, food crops that humans utilize. Rice, soy, pulses, grasses, oaks, pines, etc. Photosynthesis takes place at a peak rate of 18C. Okay. <coughs> Which is in the basically the 60s, right? To, you know, for those of you not familiar, the uh, rule of thumb is that 10C is equal to uh, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you add like another 14 or so degrees to that, you get about 65 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's where peak rate of photosynthesis takes place at. Above uh, temperatures higher than that, the process becomes less efficient and the plants begin to respire. In other words, they start drawing down oxygen and emitting CO2. Now, if you have a group of plants that include maize and sugarcane, that tipping point temperature is 28 degrees C. Now, this report has been uh, published in Science Advances. Most of the crops that plants, that the humans utilize are what we call C3 plants. And C3 plants have the efficiency at its best below 85 degrees Fahrenheit at temperatures above 85 they Fahrenheit. They start to lose excessive amounts of water in a process called transpiration out the stomata the plants wither and die. Maize, called corn, and cane, sugar cane, are what we call C4 plants. They can handle dry, hot conditions, but even they have limits. So when people say, whoa, more CO2 in the atmosphere would be great for plants. It's food for plants. They'll just suck it down. They don't know what they're talking about. They don't understand plant physiology. Plants, like all organisms, have an optimal temperature range. Outside that temperature range, they die. So this report, this research was published, was not based on computer simulation, but on direct measurements and direct observations. Researchers directly measured the sunlight, the water, the CO2 action from 1991 to 2015 like a 25-year study using a whole variety of, of instruments 
everywhere. They warned that the mean or average temperature for the warmest three months of the year had already passed the thermal maximum for photosynthesis sometime in the last decade. Currently, only about a tenth of the forests and grasslands are exposed to temperatures uh, outside their preferred ranges beyond their thresholds. And typically for a, right now, for a short period of time. But as greenhouse gas emissions continue to increase, CO2 levels continue to increase, temperatures continue to increase, at some point, and the research is saying soon, the plant could start to experience uh, such a temperature that uh, is past their tolerance. And then they'll it will be a, start to have adverse effects on the plants. Another issue is uh, what humans keep doing in, in the way of not only burning the fossil fuels, but clearing forests. That uh, adds an immediate bunch of CO2 into the atmosphere. Such that if, if these practices continue, the capacity of plants, the vegetable world, to absorb atmospheric carbon could be almost halved by 2040. Think about that. We're already seeing a decline in crop yields. And of the plants that are harvested, we're already seeing a decline in nutritional value. This would be catastrophic, along with the increasing human population. You know, you try and feed these people, you're going to have plants not being able to grow. This is going to lead to mass starvation. So uh, uh, Catherine Duffy of Northern Arizona University, who is the lead uh, investigator on this, states the earth has a steadily growing fever. And much like the human body, we know every biological process has a range of temperatures at which it performs optimally and ones above which function deteriorates. So we wanted to ask how much can plants withstand? So U.S. scientists, along with colleagues from New Zealand, set out to get some uh, handle on this uh, issue. And they basically state that the temperature tipping point of the terrestrial biosphere lies not at the end of the century or beyond, but within the next 20 to 30 years at the outside. Without mitigating warming, we will cross the temperature threshold of the most productive biome by mid-century at the absolute latest, after which the land sink will degrade. And if the plant world does not adapt, the capacity of the land to absorb surplus atmospheric carbon will drop to around 50% of its present range. That means the CO2 levels will increase ever more so in the atmosphere. So there you have it. As I stressed many times before, plants have a preferred temperature range like any other organism. Moving beyond that, we are putting their existence in jeopardy. They will not be able to function. And if they're not functioning, if they're not photosynthesizing, if they instead are respiring, food webs can collapse. Starvation on Mars will proceed, will commence. So I can see why some people are of the opinion now that we could see a 10C increase in temperature within one to two decades. It's not just the addition of greenhouse gases from burning fossil fuels. It's not just the emissions of uh, methane from the thawing permafrost. You're cutting down trees. The plants will not be able to take draw down the CO2, keeping that CO2 in the atmosphere, which adds to the increase in the level. 
the plants start to respire even more, drawing down more oxygen and putting even more CO2 into the atmosphere. And if the oceans start outgassing, it now makes sense to me how some are thinking that 10C could happen within 10, 20 years. I would love to see a study putting this into a model, taking all these aspects and modeling and see what's happening. I said the models I'm seeing now are not really looking at this plant issue and what I just described, and they're still saying seven to nine by 2100. Well, shit, I mean, we could have we can have 7 to 9 C by 2050 or even a higher amount in a shorter time period. This is not looking good at all. So, with that sobering thought, thank you for your time. Hello folks, this is Jim here with Science Talk asking you to please subscribe to my channel and to inform others of my channel and of the work that I do. Please share to social media platforms that you use. Also, as a reminder, don't forget to click the bell so that you know when I load up more videos. Finally, I ask that you support the work that I do by becoming a patron at patreon.com. Details in the description box below. Thank you for your support.